What is up, Retro Maniacs? Welcome to Retro Card Chat Podcast. My name is Mike. I am from Mike's Retro Trading Cards, and I'm joined by two men whose favorite NFL teams did not make the Super Bowl this year. They are <laughs> Joe Day and EP Erica Halleck. How you doing, guys? I, I don't have a favorite NFL team. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I, unless it's eligible. I don't know what, what's going on here. Is your favorite team in the Super Bowl? No. There. So I'm not wrong. <laughs> true. True facts. <laughs> true facts. <laughs> and EP, you know, being a Giants fan, not yeah. only did I beat you three times in fantasy football this year, my favorite <laughs> football team, the Eagles, beat your favorite football team three times as well. Like, yep. got to gotta respect the symmetry there. Um, sure. Respect symmetry. I'm okay with that, but, uh, I like, I don't like it at all. So I, don't, way, I don't like it. <laughs> Mike's Mike's been an Eagles fan, everyone for like two years. So I mean, it's, has it even yeah. been two years? It, it, I think it just started this year, <laughs> this season. Like he saw, maybe it was mid season, but yeah, hey, it was, this, it's this hurts guys pretty good. I think I'm going to get yeah, behind him and, him yeah, and his so. team. Yeah. I have that PSA 10 of Jalen hurts. So they became <laughs> yeah. my favorite team. Yeah. You got a pump. <laughs> So you can dump. You know Absolutely. That's the whole reason I started this channel was to get rid of that car. <laughs> well, boys, I have an announcement in the immortal words of George Costanza. I'm back, baby. I'm back. <laughs> it's been a long month, but month ish. But uh, yeah, I don't think it was that long. It was like three weeks, but you <laughs> it's know, like, it was like, yeah, two long. and a half weeks, oh, two and a half. Three. Yeah. All right. Let's shut up. I think there were only two podcasts. But yeah. <laughs> That's probably true. We have a point of reference. For now. No one look back. No one look at the old ones. Uh, I know you brought something as well. I did. I did. Cheers. I let a friend drink alone. That's I right. Appreciate that. mm. I brought my delicious Starbucks coffee. <laughs> And our delicious Southern Tier Brewing Company. Peter. Oh, so you have Southern Tier too? Yes, delicious. Ooh, Southern Tier as well. Delicious, Southern delicious. Tier. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, as they like to say when they don't want to pay money to advertise for the NFL, the big game is this week. <laughs> big game. Uh, yes, the Eagles, Chiefs. Andy Reid, the Eagle. oh, this is gonna be fun. The Andy Reid Bowl, the Kelsey yeah. Bowl. It's got mm-hmm. a lot of stuff going on. I, I Holmes hurts. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, I I don't like the Chiefs at all. Sorry, any <laughs> Chiefs fans out there. I never have. It's it's been when since I was a Steelers fan back when the Chiefs signed Montana. I haven't liked the Chiefs since. I'm not a big fan. So I'm rooting for the Eagles for only this, probably the second time in my life. And the last time ironically (laughs) was in the Super Bowl against my boy, Tom Brady. I was rooting for the Eagles that year. So, so fly Eagles fly, I guess is what they say in Philadelphia. I've been kind of a chiefs fan since Christian Okoye was a running back there. Like I've always kind of, kind of liked the chiefs. Um, They're like one of my AFC favorite teams. Of course I'm a giants fan. So I have to, I'm supposed to hate the Eagles, but like, absolutely. But you know, I've had a lot of Eagles on my fantasy teams that have been pretty good. Uh, Brian, 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 Brian Westbrook, Brian Westbrook, yeah. yeah, Brian Westbrook, and and Deshaun Jackson. Oh gosh, what he did to the Giants, Donovan McNabb. Um, Donovan, I had Donovan McNabb yeah. for a long time. I was just I couldn't get past Deshaun Jackson's that that freaking punt return. <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, uh, but yeah, I'm like so I like both teams. I like, I mean, Pete Sirianni knows what he's doing, and um, Andrew Reid I think is actually a. a great coach so I, I i'm looking forward to watching the game and not really having a dog in the fight i think yeah fantasy football makes you root for some weird things like <laughs> i actually yeah i've had patrick mahomes on a lot of my and that's why i don't teams. like the Chiefs yeah. currently is because you have patrick mahomes and so it does make it a little you know i i've kind of root for them a little bit and kind of makes it hard but i mean i'm all eagles in this one i don't know i i feel like the eagles give them a hard hard time mm. i feel like their strengths work match up pretty well with the Chiefs I don't know I might just be a a homer hoping for the best but really like from what I've seen in the playoffs the offensive line with with Lane Johnson back and being healthy their offensive line dominated the 49ers last week like that defense is a legit defense but like like if you saw like those quarterback sneaks like the that top view just seeing how the offensive line just Push them back, and they're they're totally going to outlaw that play. By the way, right? 
the, the uh, they the shouldn't. It's a quarterback it, sneak. <laughs> it's 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 so dangerous. Like someone's gonna get destroyed <laughs> from that rugby scrum. But but yeah, I think Travis Kelsey probably gonna give the Eagles a lot of fit. So I mm-hmm. don't know. Gonna be should be a good game. I hope hope the Eagles pull it out. But man, I don't, I mean, I'm certainly well, not going into this thinking we have it wrapped up. So. <laughs> right. Both those They're defensive lines to, are awesome. To be yeah. fair, the Eagles are going to win because EP just said he's rooting for the Chiefs. <laughs> so I, I mean, don't have a dog. No, 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 I don't have a dog in the fight. I got, I'm, he's not. He's not great at rooting for teams. <laughs> Actually, um, my Giants beat Tom Brady twice in the Super Bowl. Just that's you know, true. They're they're two and zero against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. So David cool. Tyree, I, I rooted for him both times. Remember, I hated Tom Brady <laughs> yes, for a long <laughs> time. <Yeah. I> still <laughs> <hate him. laughs> no offense, but yeah. Well, you know, not to take the shine off of the big game coming up this weekend, but we have a little bit of news we'd like to announce. We've been alluding to it, maybe hinting about it here and there, but that's right. We're now part of Jeff Wilson's sport. No, wait, no, that's not it. <laughs> that's not the news. No, do that when I'm taking it. <laughs> well, that's your, your problem for doing that. While doing this. No, we're... We are finally going to introduce a brand new show that we're going to have on the network here um, called Eight Questions. We're going to have different content creators on, and we have a set of eight questions we think are a lot of fun. It's a quick little watch, and you know, we have have a couple of them in the can, and they've turned out really good. I think the first one we're going to be posting probably Friday this week, so... You know, it's going to take all the shine off the Super Bowl, I'm sure. But this is something <laughs> we've been planning and working on for quite a while. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited about it. Yeah, very excited. <clears throat> we've been working on eight questions longer than Mike's been an Eagles fan. I mean, that's how long, <laughs> you know, for a solid year, for a solid year, we've been talking about doing this. But no, it's going to be really fun. We won't. I, are we going to tease who's our first guest or should we keep that? Keep that yeah, quiet. go ahead. Uh, you know, you, if you watched the pod last week, uh, Ziggy No was here and he stuck around and we filmed uh, eight questions with him. It was a really fun time. Got to learn some stuff about Ziggy. I'll just say Mitchell Trubitsky came up during the conversation. I'll leave it at that. I don't think anything <laughs> else has to be said. That's a teaser. That is a te- <laughs> that's what call the professionals call a teaser. Yep. <laughs> so what are you thinking about it, EP? Were you happy with it? That's awesome. Like I, I, mean, I was laughing. Uh, like um, I know I, I wasn't. You know, you don't see my, you won't see my face in the in the actual show. Nor we mine. The, we, we, yeah, we, we were in the background though, and I was just, I, I couldn't. I was like laughing at so uh, Joe Day's the superstar. Joe Day's going to be in there. Yeah, but uh, not I, like I was just, I couldn't stop laughing. Like the just this had had so right much here. fun. So, so much, so much fun. Not really sure why we decided to do it, but we turned the reins over to that guy over there. <laughs> over there, I guess he is. Sorry, right yeah. And he's the host of the show, the first couple episodes at least. And, you know, you guys. We'll see how they turn out. <laughs> we'll see how they turn out. But, yeah, I hope everybody will give us a shot and check those videos out. Yeah. All right. So I think we're here to do a podcast. Uh, enough chit chat. The gem rate numbers came out for January, and big surprise, PSA graded a million cards. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Who Actually down thought? 5%, but really when you're at a million cards, what difference <laughs> does that make? Uh, CGC, CSG did 132 k Actually, most of that was in the CGC side. They did 97 k to 34 k of the sports. Um up 28% on the trading card game and non-sports for CGC. SGC did 81K, up 4%. And Beckett actually did 57K and up 20%, although the Beckett numbers kind of have to take with a grain of salt because they don't really update their pop counts all that often. So that's why you usually see them, you know, one month they have a big gain, next month they have quite a dip because most of that's just based on when they're getting pop court pop counts up popcorn. <laughs> popcorns yeah whatever so yeah big shocker million cards for PSA, psa ep how about that it's wild i and like 
down five percent, but I mean, like you said, a million cards is, is a crazy <laughs> amount. I know it's a million. Cards. Um, I mean, the 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 really interesting numbers are. I I think that Beckett one is interesting. I didn't realize that they had those had those jumps and and then uh, dips. I, I wasn't aware of that, but I, I was I, I saw that twenty percent. I was like, oh well, they're they're back open now, so maybe that's part of the reason why, because they were they were up twenty two percent in both um the the sports cards and in the the TCG and non sports or whatever. So I, th- I thought that was an interesting number joe uh yeah so psa million cards i think it has to do with ep and i sending some cards in <laughs> Mike, throw it up i am never submitting with psa again um <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i i'm really happy about sgc i mean i mentioned this a couple of times before man oh man they're just staying in their lane aren't they they are they're mm-hmm. going to be right around 75 to eighty thousand every month I'd love to get a look at their books. I, I just feel like they're just it's it's just probably all profit for them because they've they've have this you know this small operation, but they're still churning out seventy five thousand, eighty thousand cards. Yeah, um, and seventy five thousand of those are sports cards. So I was just gonna right say, now, yeah, they're they're over like they're double what CSG is doing and over double what Beckett did in sports. Right. Class. I was so just going to say clearly and the number two for that. They yeah. they are. And when we talk about kind of our bubble or what we talk about, mostly it's, it's sports. And I mean, they are number two. It's, it's, it's a drop 613 <laughs> yeah. to 75, but they yeah. are at this point, I think we can say the clear number two, at least in sports card grading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I mean, kind of interested in that 97K CGC number too. As far as mm-hmm. I can tell, I still don't think they're separating the, the Mar- Marvel cards because they don't have, I don't think they had numbers for non-sports. I think everything was just all together in the trading card game. So but does that but does that include the Marvel? Card? I don't it has, know. It like, has to. I'm, I'm guessing it has to. Yeah. I, you would, I was, you I was, would think by yeah. looking at the numbers. Yeah. I was going to actually bring that up. I knew we were going to talk about it again in a minute. Like that, that the, up 28% is, is huge for them in that, that category. It's, uh, I feel like, didn't they, and they just opened up the, the Marvel stuff, right? To re- relatively yeah, recently. December, I yeah. think it was. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I think that's where that giant jump came I, from. And, and we talked about this in the previous pod. I was a little upset looking at their uh, numbers in the non-sports realm but you had pointed out, Mike, that they didn't actually start adding those Marvel cards to the to the pop count. I'm thinking at this point they probably have. Uh, they start. I don't know I though. It's because they don't have like a non-sport, so it kind of. I don't know that they're adding them to the trading card game or not. So okay. I wish I had that information, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I I'm really curious to to see. I mean, up 28 percent, almost a hundred thousand cards, and you gotta think. This is one of the reasons the PSA is is having a fifteen dollars special on TCG and non sports. I mean, it, PSA is not stupid, man. They can see these numbers too, and I'm sure they have seen a drop minus twelve percent. But I'm sure they saw a drop in submissions for yeah. that non sports stuff, and they're like, well, you know, CSG they're offering a different kind of service. You know, they are offering the ability to pair up comic books. And 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 now I am a CGC comic book grading expert. You are go back and watch yes. watch the video. I mean, I'm you know I've I've one for I'm one. I'm surprised that is not in your name. Badge I, I thought about name. it. And not enough characters. There weren't yeah, enough characters. True. But but I mean to be able to pair the cards up with the comics, it's just something different that PSA cannot offer. And I think you're going to see more. I think that number is going to continue to go up. Uh, That's what I was wondering, too, because like it wasn't that long ago they made the label change on this stuff to match the comic books. So, you know, is some of this maybe the popularity of that coming across in the grading numbers, too. It's also crazy that that number is higher than SGC's total number. Yeah. Like that. That's that's pretty, pretty wild. (laughs) Well, we've talked about this before, like how blown away we are about how many cards when you know again we're stuck in our little sports card bubble for the Mm -hmm. most part so so many of the cards are non-sport i mean if you look at it with the exception of psa or any of them i think the non-sports in uh, cgc csg whatever you want to call it that's more than theirs and uh and and it's a lot more Mm -hmm. i mean 
it is three times what mm-hmm. they're putting out in sports cards. And I think the sports cards are severely underrated. The, the CSG, I got my first CSG mm-hmm. slab. I think they look amazing. Yeah, I think are. more and more people, it's only up 1%. I, it's because people are afraid about the value hit they mm-hmm. might take by sending them to, to C, CSG over PSA. I will say this too, and I'll, I'll, I'll move on from that point. Nolan Alico three had just put a video out and he's, he was talking about specifically SGC, but he made the point. People need to stop selling their SGC slabs so low. He goes, that's the problem. He goes, mm-hmm. put them at buy it nows, put them at fair market value of what a PSA eight is. Put your SGC eight there and then sell them like that. Because if you put them at auction, you're going to lose money. You're they're not going to get yeah, the definitely. true value. And too many people are buying a piece of plastic with a with a label on it than they are the card. You can do so much better if you are a, a collector and trying to build your personal collection by looking at these other grading companies, saving yourself some money and getting a card that's probably graded a lot fairer and 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 a lot a lot better. Yeah, you referenced it, Joe, but PSA with their trading card game numbers down, they decided to run a $15 special. So from 1980 to present, 199 declared value. You only need 10 cards and they're $15 a card for the trading card game and non-sports. They're also opened up a vintage sports card special for 89 and older with 199 declared value, 10 cards for $15. But I wonder, you know, we've talked a lot about PSA dropping prices and stuff and all expecting that part of me is starting to wonder now, or or is this going to be their game? They're going to see where they're dropping and then run a special to bump that back up. So I I still think eventually everything's going to go down, but I, I feel like we might be hanging around and doing things this way for a while. It feels like a smart business decision, right? Like it feels like there's something that would definitely, um, it, again, because we've also talked about how they're like the, they're also testing, still testing their, mm-hmm. their their people, their their capacity, and making sure they don't go over overboard and have to have to close again. But yeah, then the fifteen dollar deal, I think, is a a lot of people are going to take advantage of that, and you're going to probably see that that down they were down twelve percent in the non sports cards and the T, the CCGs, and that's going to jump up after this special for sure. And and going after vintage man, they're like we're going after SGC in their in their house. You know what I mean? Like we're mm-hmm. going after them and trying to get some of that that uh, because I'd be curious what the breakdown is of SGC cards that eighty one thousand that's that's vintage versus versus yeah. ultra modern. You've got to think a vast majority is is the vintage stuff because people are so loyal to SGC when grading vintage cards, and that's where you see the the comps. The closest between PSA. gem rate has those numbers, but I, I forgot to check those out and write them down. So check those but out. Yeah, I mean, SGC, that's uh, PSA is is shots over the bow at both their biggest competition mm-hmm. for those specific things, right? They're a little shot over the bow at CS, uh, bow at CSG and, and, and another shot at, at SGC. And, and SGC is currently running a trading card game special too. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> they're probably trying to counteract that like SGC does not do anything in that kind of stuff. Like <laughs> it's such a small part of their business, but like they're trying to grab a little bit more of that. But PSA is like, eh, no, we're not, we're not <laughs> letting you play on that field. <laughs> so and, yeah, and they, they only graded 5,000. And they're still up eight yeah. percent. Right? Like, well, I'm gonna, sure a lot of that is is the Bowman Chrome stuff too, still coming. No, no, non sports. Oh, non sports is up. Yeah, yeah. 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 non sports is what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Like they're up eight yeah, percent, so, but they only graded five thousand. What is the price on that? Oh, what's the what's the price on that? 16? Go, do you know? I, I thought I, I do I don't know, know, but I it was like what it fifteen is. or nineteen. But uh, yeah, sixteen yeah. maybe sounds right. Yeah something in there. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I doubt a lot of people are gonna send their trading card games to SGC. It's just not, just <laughs> I, not really popular. I had a Yu-Gi-Oh card that I had sent to SGC that I got a nine out of. It was one of the more popular ones, but I eventually sold that for a pretty good price, but it took a long time. I feel <laughs> like, I feel like the Pokemon cards with the yellow borders would probably look good in the SGC slab. Like, yeah, I'm you sure, know, the black, yeah. The black, black border uh, SGC slab. Like I think. And, and the, the 90 Marvel stuff looks mm-hmm. amazing. 
in a in a tux mm-hmm. because of the all white borders. Like that's a that's a fun set that that you would think that more people. But again, people care about the 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 dollar figure. They could care less about how yeah. the card looks in a lot of cases. There's a lot of people involved in that market too that are just flippers, just like sports cards too. Like, yeah. I mean, you're if you're getting a card graded, you're obviously not playing the game with the card. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the one difference between you know sports card collectors trading. Like we all just collect them. They have right. a purpose for those cards. You can play the game, and a lot what? of people do, but they're not playing it with it. I I made the joke when we were doing the uh, comic book reveal. I'm like, I mean, these look so great in these slabs, but you can't read the comic book anymore. (laughs) Like, I just, I don't understand it. But yeah, that's the the one flaw they forgot about is one flaw. Yeah, they they need a slab for each page so you can lead through it. You know. (laughs) It'll be interesting too to to see next month the PSA sports card numbers because you know they had the $15 special they extended to the end of the month the end of December so a lot of these cards you know I have my order just popped from there that I had sent in it arrived there I think the 4th of January so my cards were some of the ones that were great in in that so with it going back up to 20 it'll be interesting to see what kind of a drop if any they have next month you have yeah. to, I mean, you have to feel like they probably got a big influx right at the very end. So yeah, I would think these, so. Although they moved along like really quickly, like oh. mine, it's going to be just a little over a month door to door for that. So they seem to be handling the capacity they're at like really well. So I'm sure they did get an influx, but they handled it, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And these yeah. numbers reflect, I believe, EP is what you were asking too. These numbers, I don't think reflect until the card actually pops right right like yeah, the so, pop report yeah so i, yeah, I, I would i would think not just submissions it's put mm-hmm. by the by the yeah. when they actually get graded and pop there are probably some in there though from mm-hmm. you know the people that were like i sent mine in at the very end of december like the very last point and you know mine are now going to be on the early february pop record so like i feel like most of February, you're not going to have a whole lot of the $15 special in it. I think the January okay. numbers probably cover most of that. So okay. it'll be interesting to see. Another interesting thing to see is going to be the deal between ComC and CSG. You are able... <laughs> Come on, that was good. <laughs> no, I, I'm just shaking was. my head at the story, not the transition. Yeah. transition. Oh, no, I was, I was, I was, I was smiling about the transition. Yeah, I, I am the that. transition master. But anyway, yeah, you can actually now go into your ComC inventory and send a card directly from there to CSG to get graded. They get graded and they go right back to your ComC vault or whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure what ComC calls your area where they keep all the cards. But yeah, I mean, it. Again, we've talked about similar things like this in the past. Not really something I'm terribly comfortable with, like because I like to see the card myself before I decide to grade it. But you know, it's also something that at the same time is pretty cool. They they uh, Comp C does they do have like um some if a card is like a not a, a mint card. It'll have like mm-hmm. excellent and near mint. They do do some of that sort of stuff. But I mean, that's their people doing it. And, look, yeah. and looking at it and and their scans just, are not very yeah, like, good <laughs> i would i would never ever ever i mean you can even zoom in like you sh- sure you can yeah. zoom in and, and turn the cards over and stuff but there's there are so many different things that you can't see through a scan mm-hmm. even a really really Especially good scan. Theirs, yeah yeah I, I, it, n- n- there's no way that i would it's in theory it's great that you can get it uh graded and then get it back in your comp scene and then somebody else can buy it and then they can worry about it but like if, if they're gonna all come back sixes like it's it's definitely not worth it. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, man, that pop report is going to be popping with some sixes, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> like, it's great. I, I would, as meticulous as, as we all are in sending cards off to be graded, I, I, I can't imagine. Mm-hmm. I, I need to know who's prepping these cards. And it's not like comic books where they, you can press the cards, and, you know, do <laughs> things like that. But, like, Wiping off, wiping off the cards with a microfiber. Who's checking? Cor- is someone actually checking any of this stuff? I mean, well, it sounds like I, you're putting I, a sleeve, putting it into. I a, did a watch their from- tutorial video, and people were asking in the comments if you if you're going to wipe the cards down and stuff. And they said yes, they will wipe the card down. They're going to put put it in the soft sleeve and the card saver, and they will be taking care of all that. It's just, you know, that. Do you trust anybody else to do that? 
Like, it, like I mean, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't be as hesitant to have somebody doing that. But like, biggest problem I have is I can't really see what I'm buying there. And I, you know, a lot of this stuff we talk about, it really not geared toward toward us we're looking at a different time period of cards so you know people with newer cards if you're buying like a prism or a chrome uh, I guess, you're yeah. you're looking at the centering like uh, they're gonna have it to do have good corners it should yeah. have but like, they're gonna stuff. have to i feel like they're really going to have to check the condition of the cards they have in the listings now like they yep they do that but i don't think like if you look at the ones that don't yeah have it's a like the wild wild west yeah, yeah. like <laughs> especially you know for the older cards like stuff around 90s 2000s like you can look at it and see corner wear and yep. stuff on some yeah. of that and it's not noted and stuff so it, i feel like to make this kind of thing really work, if you want it to work, you kind of have to put a little more into that. I don't know if they will or not, but the, I'd like to see it. Yeah, I almost felt like they would need to start doing even more levels, like saying, "Oh, this one, this one's a, a mint. This one's a this one's possible gem mint." Like they would have to like, really they could have to they'd have to have somebody doing that there, which I'm not sure if they are prepared to to start doing that because that seems like a lot more a lot more effort. Yeah, definitely. And, and we're looking at it just from like the collector, the buyer perspective, from a business perspective for CSG, they're, they're right. making moves, you know, like yeah. so they've got the deal with eBay for the raw cards uh, to authenticate those. They now got this deal with Com C. I mean, they're, they're doing, you know, I've said, you know, how many pods in a row the SGC is just happy being in their lane. They're, they're, they're making some moves, but it's, they're doing their thing. CSG is like, no, we're not satisfied with doing our thing. We want to be PSA. And whether or not people are, are going to get on board with it and the values start to shift, I'm not sure. But I do know they are making an effort to at least get into that, that PSA conversation by doing deals like this. Like Com C is a massive, you know, I think uh, Sports Card Dad calls it like the Disney World of, of cards. I mean, it's just massive. You can go in there and get lost for hours mm -hmm. down a rabbit hole and come see if you need any other you know youtube channels to sponsor let us know but uh you can and get lost for starbucks. yeah starbucks as well <laughs> Southern Tier, jack Daniels, any of you guys um but but yeah i mean at the end of the day csg is making these moves to try and be that if not psa at least get get up to the conversation and com c is going to have a lot more graded cards available on their format too. So mm -hmm. works out pretty well for them. I mean, a value, like you said though, value wise, I don't know, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be anything that pushes the needle in terms of what somebody's willing to pay for it. But I don't, it's, it, I did look over like the video and the process of how to do it. It is really cool that you can just take a card and you just go right in, you click on it, gives you the option, the grade. It only shows you the, the grading levels available for the value of the card. Like it filters stuff out that isn't relevant for the grading. It's really an easy process and really cool. Like, like I said, if I were somebody that was comfortable with what I was sending, it would be great but I want to see. Yeah. That well, I mean, I just, I just had a thought like uh, maybe this, maybe the thing. Yeah, I know it doesn't happen very often, but the thing, <laughs> the, thing <laughs> uh, con the thing about like, why don't you, well, if you want to, if you want to grade a car with, with CSG and you plan to sell it, why not just send it, f find the card that you want to send, send it to CS, send it to comp C, then it's on the comp C marketplace. Yeah, and you know what I mean. Like that, that's when you could you could submit through Com C to to CSG, and then just have it come back to, to Com C if you're going to put it there anyway. And I'm sure people will that, do that too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. part of this too. They want. I'm sure the Com C side are thinking that they'll get people to do that, and they'll send more yeah. cards, and they'll have more graded cards available on their marketplace. And and it is getting more CSG slabs into the mm -hmm. public view. You know, yeah. we've talked about this before. You have to, you have to see them at card shows. You have to see them at your card shops. You have to, they need to be out there mm -hmm. and they're doing a good job with the non-sports and the Pokemon mm -hmm. and, and now the Marvel cards. They need to do more with the, with the sports card side of it. And to be on a, a, a platform like Com C, having all your slabs there or a, lo a lot of slabs there is, is a pretty big thing. And they're going to be doing the high res scanning too. So, you know, 
when they do go to the marketplace, they're going to have a lot better scans available there for people to see. So, and you know, that's a service you have to pay extra for when you send it in yourself. Hmm. You know, they don't oh, provide do you. you. Yeah. Okay. There's like $5 per card to do this. Scan. Yeah. That's so, what it is. I mean, yeah. that's what it is for the comic books too. Yeah. So, yeah. so then, I mean, that, in that case, like if you're going to submit the CSG, why not go through comp kind, yeah. kind of thing? You know what I mean? I mean, that, yeah, I, I think there there are pluses, and you know, like I said, I, I'm not probably not going to be sending any cards. I have in my inventory there already, but yeah, in that case, it, it would be something if you want to try sending some in and selling them. That'd be a good way to do it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so the big news of the week. Whew, here we go. <laughs> Fanatics has announced that for the. Sometime in the second half of 2023, they're going to take their Fanatics Live app, which I'm really not familiar with, but I guess it's kind of more of a hangout place right now where people can just discuss sports and whatnot. But they're going to be changing it into a live breaking and shopping platform. Uh, think whatnot, I guess. So... Yeah, they the new they hired a new CEO of Fanatics Live, Nick Bell, who's a tech guy. Like I don't think he has any that I've been able to find any connection to the card world, but he's gonna he's a tech guy and he's the CEO of it. But here here's the big quote that I want to share with everybody to start off. They said that Fanatics Live will focus on transforming the digital shopping experience. What? Through personality and what? content driven live commerce. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, EP. We thought back to oh, uh, oh, God. PR speak makes me sick to my stomach. And that was full of it. Yeah. And just, it's, full and, and, and then, and then when you translate it to what it actually is saying, it might be even grosser. It might be. You know, we were texting about this last night and at, at a certain point, you know, if you had, if the viewers had privy to our text threads, it, at, <laughs> at a certain point, we always say, save it, save it for the podcast, shut <laughs> it down. Yep. But EP and I at the same time texted and we thought Backyard Breaks was getting juice boxes, <laughs> like almost verbatim, the exact same I phrasing, know. like. Imagine I'm, how bad it's going to be when they start be. getting hits on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine if like the backyard breaks was an in-house panini team. Like that's basically what's going to happen. You think you see, I, imagine I, when they are? Did you say? <laughs> yeah. You're not the conspiracy theorist. Maybe. I thought that. Was I'm not. Right that's here. the point. That's yeah, what I'm that's saying. Pretty, yeah, that's that's bad. Bad. But yeah, it's just yeah. I, I, okay. I, I, let I let me play devil's advocate here for a second. Oh please, right. please do. Is are we just grumpy old men like are we just out of touch like are we just looking back to the days where you go into my card shop and and you pull packs of cards and we're not evolving with the hobby like you mean the good old no, days no we're, well then the, i mean are, but... we're just old right like no this is perfectly normal isn't <laughs> it to a big percentage of the collector base in the hobby we don't like it but we don't like it because we're grumpy no. old men no, 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 just no, complain no, about anything no, 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 no. get <laughs> off ahead, my lawn ahead, I'm, okay one. <laughs> i'm just throwing that out there devil's advocate but but I, I don't have a problem with a breaking part of it. I have no problem with like whatever backyard breaks does, whatever it's, I, I, it's kind of entertaining in a stupid way, you know, whatever. And if people are into it, that's cool. I'm not, I'm not into breaking period, but like I'll watch it and you know, it's entertaining. What my problem is it's the company producing the cards that they want you to buy. Then also having content where people are breaking that product if you don't think that those boxes are going to have the one on ones in, you <laughs> are crazy. This is you the know new what? world, though. Yeah. This, this is, is no, the no, new no, world no. order. Yeah. This is how it's going to be from now on. We're we're just we're we're reading the tea leaves. Is, is all we're doing. Like we're not we're not being grumpy old men. We're reading the tea leaves. We're looking at everything that has gone on over the past year, and we're kind of saying, "Hey, isn't there a chance that there's going to be more of this happening?" And uh, there, uh, there's no no doubt in my mind that the, like the, they're they're going to have good stuff on there because they can sell more on there if if they do that. I can't wait for the sports card radio video on this. I got to be honest. Yeah. I, I think I think <laughs> they're going to have a lot of fun with this one because, yeah, you're right, P. Like 
they, they're trying to promote a product. What better way to promote a product than to show how good the product can be? And they can show that by a lot. And they, of and they can make more money through that. Like, and they're going to make money through all of that, right? Like it's, it, it is because it, that right. content is going Everywhere to, it's going to benefit them the way, as well. They're making money. You know, oh, did you see what you liked here? Buy a box here or mm-hmm. buy into our next break. Hey, maybe there will be another big hit there. Who knows? You know, like now, now watch this ad and then now, now watch, watch this, this ad, ad, ad and, <laughs> and go buy a sweatshirt and a hat. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's you it's, guys it's, need your, your foil hats. Like you should have worn <laughs> them for this week. I, I can't believe I'm Tell, the voice of reason. No, you are not. No, you're not. I am the opposite the of reason. Of reason. Let me just say. You're going to be on the up and up. Nothing juiced <laughs> is going to happen. <laughs> we we recently lost the great Don West. You know, we didn't get a chance to bring that up on the podcast, but rest in peace to him. He was fantastic at what he did. And for those of you old enough, you know what I'm talking about. But isn't this just really Fanatic's version of shop at home, home shopping, QVC. This went, is the modernized version of all of us watching he's, 89 upper deck boxes that somebody bought from QVC <laughs> when he was younger in the middle like of the three night. In the morning. How this is just the modern version of that. Is no, it because no. Don West did not make everything that he was selling. Yeah, but he like how do you how do we know that, that they weren't sending it? the good stuff to QVC? They were sh- they were moving more product for they were moving more product for those companies every, than no, every anybody else. Every is going to be the same pasta. All the stuff, so, all the think of how many Griffies they printed just to sell on QVC. That's yeah. We Those know upper deck printed not them. cards that potentially could wor- be worth a million dollars. It was also just a Don different West level. Dollars. It's the same thing at a different level. Yeah, Don but that West level is have so upper deck different. on his business card. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that. How do we know he wasn't working with them? If, if he did, then it was exactly what we're talking about. It was exactly the problem because it was yeah. underhanded, a dirty, underhanded thing. <laughs> but yeah. I'm saying we were part of that. And now I didn't buy any. Big... Don't talk to me about that. <laughs> Somebody I did. <laughs> I don't know who. Like, did, did, I don't think Don West was opening up packs and saying, "Look, I got a Griffey in every pack." He, he used to, he used to open stuff up and talk about how great everything was, even when it wasn't great. <laughs> well, yeah, but then when you have upper back in the day, they didn't have these one-on-one autos. They didn't have these cards that are worth life-changing money. I mean, that to me is the big difference. So if you're doing a break with Fanatics and they can just keep printing the stuff, they can just keep printing it. Don West couldn't keep printing stuff from Upper Deck though. Upper Deck did that all on their own. <laughs> but, you know, Fanatics is going to see, oh, hey, we got a really big hit on this one one Let's make another one one I, I just, I don't trust that they're not going to be juicing the boxes that they're having at their at their breaks i mean i might get in on the breaks hell i mean yeah I like get lucky. Isn't, isn't the logical response to that to buy in on the breaks <laughs> but those are the type of people we hate I right know. i mean Absolutely. we don't like that you know i, I mean from sh- from fanatic side of it what they're thinking is they already have a whole bunch of people who like sports that have this app so they're trying to pull those people. This is this is their first attempt to grow the hobby. Like they throw these numbers out about where the hobby is going to be by 2027. I have no idea where they get those from because this is not a regular business type of industry. You can't just assume growth year over year. Like this has peaks and valleys. But anyway, I digress. They want to now have all the people that already have the app because they're buying other stuff. They're talking about sports. Now they want to draw them into buying this stuff live and probably, do you think, I think it'll work. Yeah. And then, Oh, it'll work. Oh yeah. (laughs) Doesn't mean it's good. And there's there's a sleazy guy in a fancy suit that walks in and says, Hey, let's make sure that that first break has the one one Justin Herbert or the one one Mike Trout or whatever in it. Just, you know, just make sure to send that to the, to the first breaker. Yeah. What are we going to do? Like, what option do you have? Fanatics is taking I, everything. Oh, you over. have no. Yeah, yeah. I don't I, think I, we're. I don't think we're giving any any uh, idea. What's like, the this, difference yeah. if they're sending everything to themselves or sending it to backyard breaks? Why not it keep feels, it in house? It feels grosser to send it to. It does feel themselves. grosser. It's, it does feel a lot grosser. <laughs> they're going to like this. Is just step one. Like, it's there's going to be so much stuff that you. 
they're it's just gonna be their way like we this is what through, we have halfway through the box they're gonna take an intermission and say all right who wants to bet on the next uh cavaliers <laughs> game who wants to you know who wants to bet, wanna on, wanna bet on what's gonna game? come out of the next pack all right yeah, yeah. yeah. that's oh, really God. don't give them any more terrible ideas stop it <laughs> like i'm like, sure they already <laughs> thought of that yeah. oh yeah i mean there's gonna be so much ridiculousness that i I, I said, I have to write this down so I don't forget it, guys. I got my little anti jeff <laughs> notebook here. I said, I was worried about running out of content over the next couple of years. I think Fanax is going to keep us <laughs> filled with content to talk yeah, about they will. over the next Especially couple of years. Especially as they announce all this new stuff. Um, this, this, cr- this crushes uh, other breakers, right? Like this takes, well, all the breakers are going to be right. like That's done. a good question. By the... It, it's probably going to have an impact on smaller breakers. I don't from, I could be wrong, but what this looks like to me is they want to, sounds like they want to have some of the more popular breakers and stuff be of part course. of this. Yeah. And they're going to share revenue for them coming on their platform to do it. So why, why build an audience when they can just steal the, the, the other, the breakers? Exactly. Breaker. I mean, that's pretty much fanatics doesn't nice want to sense. build a new sports card industry. They're just going to figure out the way to best monetize what's out there. So they're going to do that. Like whether we like it or not, it, I think it's pretty clear with what they've done already that the bombastic personalities of this hobby are going to be at the forefront of what they're pushing oh, yeah, for sure. to market their product and that's just going to be the way it is like we, we don't have to like it it's not going to change they don't care what we think because <laughs> here's the thing people like us are not buying a ton of ultra modern anyway mm-hmm. they want to get you know the 20 and under to buy to spend 400 dollars on a box of ultra modern they Though know it's growing the hobby, you should also find a way to get all the people that are already in the hobby that might not be interested in all this super this ain't modern it. stuff. Like, yeah, like <laughs> uh, I know that, but I'm I'm just you know giving them giving them a little bit of a, a advice. Well, Mike Rubin like watches us. So, yeah, he, you know, he watches religiously, and I like to tell him all the time what to do. Yeah. And you know, don't forget about all the collectors that like the two dollar cards. That's you know, all they, I'm saying. If, if they were to send us a case of stuff, I mean, we would definitely. I would probably we would get excited about some, yes. about, about some about some ultra modern. They you know? they should do some retro <laughs> product and have us run the breaks, Actually. and we would be able to push probably we way more product. product than backyard breaks, right? Um, <laughs> you said easy. you said Mike, you know about the two dollar card thing, right? Most of the stuff in ultra modern is only worth two dollars. Not even. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you spend you spend four hundred dollars on a box, and you might get a five dollar, right. you know, memorabilia card. I mean, there's there's, yeah, I this is not for us, and and uh, I think it just I I think at the end of the day, it's just a bad look. It it just it's just so weird to me that no one i mean i'm sure you're other just an old, old you're just an old guy no you're just out of touch with the time it totally feels like a like i said a out of touch guy with people a being okay student. getting ripped student. off like, <laughs> i am way cooler and hipper than you guys so you know i'm i'm all in with this and fanatics and you know <laughs> they they've been using the term personality driven right like they are that is clearly a marketing term that somebody sat around and decided they're all going to use this term personality driven. So I've also read too, that they're potentially going to be bringing non hobby related personalities into this. So that's listen, I, that's what I want. Somebody who doesn't know anything about cards, breaking my cards for me, my, my in pulling that one. I cannot wait for Guy Fietti to be on there breaking my cards. Like, <laughs> I got to tell you, if Guy Fieri's breaking his for honor. and Ginner, <laughs> his yeah. honor, the mayor of Flavortown. I am absolutely in. I'm buying into that break. They got me. Of course, I'm much more hip and cool than you guys. <laughs> and I'm much more open to all these brand new ideas that fanatics so smartly are throwing out into the hobby world. So the, the, the young hip so, people are so referencing Guy Fieri. Everyone, everyone who watches Mike's Retro Trading Cards. 
Keep that in mind. EP and I are the only ones that actually care about you, the viewer. <laughs> Mike over here only cares about getting some getting some cheddar cheese from. I don't know what you're talking there. about. You know? yeah. Michael Rubin and I go way back. I've been talking about him since podcast one. You've been you've been friends with Rubin as long as you've been a fan of the Eagles. <laughs> I, I mean, know. seriously, <laughs> we used to hang out with him at the Sixers games all the oh, time. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, all kidding aside, Mike, does this? They want more personalities. <laughs> that does that mean that you want me to start eating more, um, like thirty year old pieces of gum, chewing gum? I think you car- should. Car- car- yeah, gum? like right. that is like every your gimmick. Yeah, like every episode, you want me just out here, just like yeah, cra- crazily eating um old gum. Okay. Then uh, I, Nick Bell or whatever his name is might see it, and yeah. before you know it, you might be breaking on Fanatic Slide. You know, <laughs> come. <laughs> literally all joking aside. So, um, two backyard breakers recently left. The one who said that's a Tesla, I think. The mm-hmm. the one who doesn't wear much of a shirt, and then one of the uh, young women who who break for them. I don't know their names because again, I'm apparently an old man. Sarah is that her name? No. Me? You have Me? no idea they're a hip cool <laughs> guy. So anyway, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that's why they left. That's a good maybe, question. Maybe they're gonna be in-house breakers for for uh fanatics. Who knows? Well, you know, if you sign on to the podcast next week and there's a blank screen up here, you'll know where I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll be like, wait, where's okay? I guess we're doing this on our own. <laughs> well, I'm sure nobody expected Mike to be standing here defending fanatics live and yeah, you know you're the hat guy you are the tinfoil you hat guy you are the, the tinfoil, tinfoil hat guy. guy and i i will so say you don't this, think they're going to get juice boxes i i definitely think they do yes i'm oh. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm with you guys 100 but i really thought that you know playing devil's advocate i knew we all had the same thoughts so what fun was it going to be to have three old guys standing here saying the same thing? I decided <laughs> yelling at the screen just for the I sake a young one of the group right for here. the sake of entertainment that I would play devil's advocate and you know maybe I don't know maybe get a, a little bit of <laughs> out of this. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we'll wrap it up there. That was a good chat this week, and we will hopefully see everybody for the first episode of eight questions EP. on friday oh, 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 we I we'll only see joe and our, our guest ziggy yep. no but I'm laughing in the background watch for that on friday morning it'll be uploaded but until then we will see you guys later good chat guys see you boys adios